50 years after the Nigerian civil war, many are still looking forward to more discussions on what went wrong and how this affected the country economically, politically and in other areas. In this report, TVC News Political Desk looks at how the war came about and some of the lessons therefrom. The 1966 Nigerian coup d'etat began on the 15th of January 1966, where some Nigerian soldiers killed 22, including the Prime Minister of Nigeria, many senior politicians, many senior army officers. The coup plotters attacked major cities in the country, namely Kaduna, Ibadan, and Lagos. They also blocked the Niger and Benue River within a two-day period before they were subdued. In avenging this, the 1966 Nigeria counter coup, or the so-called July rematch coup, resulted in the killing of Nigeria's first military head of state, General Johnson Aguyi Ironsi, and Lieutenant Colonel Adekule Fajui, who was hosting the visiting Aguyi Ironsi in Ibadan. Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowan was appointed the head of state by the coup cool conspirators after terminating Irosi's government. As a result, there was an ethnic killing of Igbo people in the northern and eastern parts of Nigeria. This led to a civil war in Nigeria, also known as the Nigerian Biafra War, that lasted from 6th of July 1967 to the 15th of January 1970. The famous Aburi Accord was reached in 1967 at a meeting attended by delegates of both the Federal Government of Nigeria represented the Supreme Military Council and the Eastern Delegate led by the Eastern Region's leader, Colonel Ojuku. The meeting was billed to be the last preventing all-out war. The major key actors were General Yakubu Gowon, the then Head of State, Colonel Odumegu Ojuku, who was the military governor of the Eastern Nigeria during the Civil War, and General Olusegun Obasanjo, who was the commander of the 3rd Marine Commando Division. The war casualties, over 50,000 military men were killed, 2 million civilians actually lost their life, over 3 million people were also displaced, 1 million refugees we had around the country. After a series of dialogue, the war ended in January 15, 1970, with Philip F. Young surrendering to the Nigerian government. And they were all received by General Olusha Gwambasanjo on the 15th of January, 1970. After this, what were the lessons that learned from the Nigerian Civil War? About 50 years ago, Nigeria went through a dark path when the center could not hold any longer and things fell apart. Nigerian government went head to head with the eastern part of the country, which said they were seeking self-determination. To get an insight into this, TVC went in search of veterans who fought in the war. This veteran, who was on the path of Biafra, told me it was a 17-year-old boy when he took up arms. Most of us who fought that war were between 16, 17, 18, 19. And the senior ones that go on, they were 30 something. To tell you the group that were in charge of that time, these are groups, impressionable. Uh -huh. And at that time, as a young man, no girlfriend, no wife, no child, I was ready to do anything. Another veteran recounts his ordeal at the war front. I was in the war front. So, have any young man, as a matter of fact, when this was developing and uh, we began to see train loads of people, arms and limbs and people cut to pieces and pregnant women, you know, ripped open and they were brought in trains and dumped at the Nugu, some we saw, some we didn't see, but you know the story goes round. And every young man says, well, you know, you feel threatened because you think this is going to be you. But when I asked of the lessons learned from the war from both veterans, their reactions were different, but they preferred solutions going forward. I don't know, we must go back somewhere. We have lost it. 
And I was just said something I was talking, I was an officer, I said, no, don't talk about Biafra. I said, you can't stop talking about it. It's in the spirit. And unless we talk about it, we will not know what drives us to where we are. I told Abbasanjo that. Those who felt that the best way to deal with it is to deal with it as a non-event, took a lot of time and effort to suppress discussions on it. And therefore, that's why the lessons were not transmitted to the present generation. He may not have fought in the war, but he has his experience to share. Yes. He also spared a thought on how to enhance healing. I was a victim of the Civil War. We didn't go to school for those three years. I was in elementary five in 1967. And when the war ended in 1970, I went back to repeat elementary, elementary five. I think we need to rework our system. In fact, start with giving the South its additional states. Additional states. That will balance up. Additional states. Yes. Once you do that, we'll have one state capital. We'll have a, one go, one, go, a governor with the six. Then the, there will be take off grant. Many of the view that talks need to continue to educate people on what really threatened the country's unity. Ademola Lawrence, TVC News, Lagos.